Okay, the action this time is going to be on Lane Flack. One of the young guns, Lane, one of the chip leaders, 000. one of the toughest no limit holding players in the world. And he quickly folds, get his heels cooled off a little bit that so last pot. Raise his pot to 9, Here comes 000. the aggressive Phil Ivey. Now look, he's raising this pot with a 4 5 off suit, Vince. Okay, this is amazing. This guy's just taking a shot here. Now Peter has a King 10 off suit, glances at Phil Ivey, and then throws his hand away. And he's got an interesting hand, a 7 8 of spades, but he's not going to play it. And look at Howard. Now he has the Jack 10 of diamonds here. And he folds. Oh. Now both those guys fold oh. hands that you're looking to get, Vince. Absolutely. Now Ron has an ace and a five offsuit, and he's calling. Ron calls the six thousand. He doesn't quite believe Phil yet. Line. He does. With well, it, all these players know how aggressive that Lane and Phil are. Well, Flop is ace, ace, Jack, Jack deuce. deuce. Ron checks, and it helps his hand. He's got aces, and he checks it. Now Phil Ivey has a belly buster draw. He has a straight draw, and he comes out and bets thirteen thousand. And look at this. Ron goes to the big chips. He comes in for 35000 So it's an immediate raise. He's saying, you know what? I don't believe you, Phil. If you do have it, you'll come over the top of me. But right now, I'm challenging you. Phil Ivey folds. It's the second time he's check raised over the top. Both times have been successful. Ron Rose off to a great start here at the final table. Ah, no, no applause, huh? And Ron says, hey, clap for me. You know, they're clapping for these other locals. Ron's from Ohio. And they do clap for him. Pete has okay, Phil Ivey is our chip leader, and he's going to be the first to act Andy in this hand. Now, Phil is going to think twice about playing junk hands again after that 4-5 or five debacle. He's going to play him, but he'll play him in position. This time he Button folds. Button on Howard. The 6-5. Peter with a 7-9 offsuit. He folds. And Andy has nothing. A 7-queen offsuit. He folds. Now look at this. Howard has a big hand. Ace-king on the button. Okay, it's different suits, but you know what? It's still a big hand. Call. He just calls. calls yeah. Now that's quite a unique play here. Now look at Ron Rose. Ron has picked up two tens. He bets 30000 at the pot. Ron raises to 31500 Lane Flack gets out of the way, but look at the look on his face. He didn't like to throw anything away. That's right. Now look at Howard. Howard's trying to be solemn. He's trying to be cool here. We know he's going to play this pot. All in. Howard says And he goes all in. in. <laughs> he has limped in and then come over the top for all his money, and now Ron's got to figure out what is going on here. This guy limped in on the Ron button. Ron has asked for a chip count. He says count it. Now, Ron's a mathematician. Now, once he gets done counting here, he's going to see there's about 120000 in the pot. It's going to cost him about 50000 more to call. I can't imagine he'll throw these tens away. 39, Look at Howard. Howard doesn't want him to call right now. You just got ace-king. It's pretty good. But, you know, I like uh, Ron's hand better. I'd rather have a solid pair of tens than a uh, speculative ace-king. But Ron knows that he's limped in, and now he's re-raised. Ron's afraid that he has two aces or two kings. Right, and not sure. just If he knew he had ace-king, he'd already been in the pot an hour ago. If he calls and loses, he'll go through about half his stack. But still, it's a lot of money laying out there. Big crowd here, eerily quiet. Look at Howard, looking away, looking down. Not trying to give any information away. Now, Ron's wondering, whoa, this guy limped in on the button and came back over the top of me. That shows a stronger hand normally than just an immediate raise. It's kind of funny how it's looking at those cards, but, you know, he's not going to let anybody else peek at them. It's not like it's your home games when no. you have a hand and you show your buddies on the side. And Ron lays this Ron hand down. I'm, I'm shocked at that. Well, that surprises me a little bit because Ron's sort of an aggressive player. He likes to gamble it up. There was about 120,000 laying out there. Announcer, cost him 52,000 more to call, yet he opted to lay that hand down and give Howard the pot. That's a pretty big lay down, hey, I think, Ron's by Ron Rose the right there. Let's see if it comes back to haunt him. Well, Ron's got to be questioning that last hand. He's well, thinking, well, should I have called? Well, Ron Rose is a retired executive. He plays poker basically as a hobby. Yeah, that's the kind of hobby I want. A little extra cash on the side. But let's not forget, a lot of these poker players do play this game and make big money playing it.
These days, it seems everyone's playing poker. Doctors, lawyers, firemen, even rabbis. But some of these guys do it for a living. If you want to be successful, you really have to approach it as a business. You really have to keep very good records and try and play the best game you possibly can at all times. It's a lot of work to come out positive at the end of the year. If you're not concentrating 100% on your game, it's going to be hard to be positive at the end of the year. Focus is key, and to me, I have a lot of business interests. You know, I get very busy with a lot of projects. That's all part of money management. It's a tough way to make a living. I think you need a lot of talent, and it's hard to overcome all the good players. I wouldn't recommend it. You really have to love the game of poker, and you have to do it because you love it. No matter how you look at it. It's a tough way to make an easy living. The action is on Peter. Pete has a king eight offsuit. He folds. And look at this. Andy's got the pair of tens again. Now, wait, did someone shuffle that deck? <laughs> it's the same hand Ron just had. He comes in for 15,000. Howard with a deuce five offsuit. Well, he feels like Houdini now, an escape artist, getting away from that last hand without losing. He folds, and now here's Ron with ace jack of clubs. Yeah, he's got to play that, you would think. He's a little confused from that last hand. He does call. He sure. calls 15,000. Lane with a 3-9 offsuit gets out of the way, and Phil gets out of the way, and here we go. It's the two tens against the ace jack of clubs. Well, Mike, this is interesting. we got the businessman against the lawyer here. <laughs> yes, we do, Vince, but don't hold that against them. These are both good guys. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more action from Foxwoods right after this. Big Bucks battle at the world's largest casino. Businessman Ron Rose is looking at a bad deal. He's run into a tough hand held by poker pro and attorney, Andy Block. Now, Rose needs help from Lady Luck to avoid a crushing loss here at Foxwoods. We're going to have a flop. It's two tens, remember, for Andy. Ace jacket clubs for Ron. And on the flop, flop comes queen, queen four, four. Fours. Now, this is no help to Ron. Fours with a queen. Now, Andy's got a pair of tens. And he checks. Yeah, Ron says, haul in quickly, in. without hesitating. Andy calls. And Andy calls Andy him just as quick. Cards, Andy made a great call right there. Immediately. Jack didn't jack even hesitate. Andy Absolutely. Ron is uh, he stands up. Ron a little bit of a tilt box. factor, I think. Andy He's well, just I'll pushing it in. He moved all his chips okay, in. Now, Ron's going to have to catch an ace or a jack, or Andy's going to double up here. Uh, the turn is a no, deuce. not yet. One more card Andy to do it. The deuce comes the off. Course. He needs an ace or a jack. Here we go. And it's another and deuce. No help. Andy Block has doubled up here, and that hand is going to cripple Ron. Oh, man. He is spiraling down. That is devastating to him. What a great call by Andy right there. He watched that last pot play between Howard and Ron. He thought maybe the guy's a little bit on tilt. Great call. I'll be the most aggressive player at the table. If I can sense my opponent, I'm going to then turn to like the psychological aspects of the game. Well, Phil and Lane are still our two chip leaders. Howard and Andy have moved up on the scale in pretty good position. Peter stayed about the same, and Ron has got to regroup quickly here, or he's going to be in serious trouble. Ron is trying to lick his wounds here. Peter's going to be the first to act here. He looks down at a queen-10 offsuit. A queen 10 is not that good. 15 times. It's not good at all to open in first position. With now look it. at this, but he's going to raise he's with it. He's doing it. He's coming for 15,500. 15, I'm not crazy about this play. Andy folds. Howard looks at a 6 5 and folds. Ron with a 6 deuce on the button folds. Lane with a king 4 folds. And look at this. Phil has picked up two nines in the big blind. Yep, yeah, two nines, a real hand. And he's just going to call it, Mike. Well, you have to give respect to a guy who raised in first position. Phil's going to look at a flop before he goes any farther with this hand. And the flop is 10-8-5. This is a good flop. 
a great flop for Pete. He's caught his pair of 10s with a queen kicker in front of Phil's nines. But it's not a bad looking flop if you have two nines either. So Phil looks like he's going to test the water here. 20,000. All in. Pete quickly goes all in over the top. All in. He's got tens. I mean, he didn't even bat an eye for 100,000. He moves his chips in. And now Phil's got to make a decision here. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Phil's got a big problem. Now, you have to give the guy respect that comes in an early position with a raise. And now you bet out. Now he moves all in for all his chips. Your two nines simply just shrunk up. I'll tell you, this could be a crippling blow to Phil Ivey if he calls this bet and doesn't catch something. He's going to fold this hand. That's a very good fold by Phil Ivey right Phil there. Absolutely. Down. Good players know when to get away from a hand, and that's exactly what Phil did. Well, you got to know when to hold him and know when to fold him. Phil Ivey folded correctly there. There's a lot of money on the line. going to do my best to win it. Hey, but right now, Lane and Phil are still our chip leaders, and Andy and Peter and Howard have all gone up, and poor Ron is bringing up the caboose right now. Action is on Andy. Andy peeks down, looks at a queen eight offsuit. He folds. Howard has a junk hand, a three nine offsuit, and folds. Ron has an ace and a seven in his hand. I'll be very surprised if he doesn't move all in right here. He's only got 28,000 left. He folds the ace high. This is totally out of characteristic from Ron. Absolutely. This guy's usually playing really aggressive. He's obviously disturbed from the last few hands. Now Lane folds a jack four on the button, and here comes aggressive Phil Ivey. Raise it up. And look at this. He's raising the pot. He's come in for 13,000 with a queen six. There he goes. Peter has picked up a monster hand, the big blind, an ace queen. Well, I wouldn't call it a monster, but it's a pretty solid hand. It's a big hand against a blind, believe me. And he calls. He doesn't re-raise. He just calls. We're going to see a flop. Now, Phil has queen six. Peter has ace queen. The flop comes ace six five. Oh, no, this is very interesting. Obviously, Peter's got aces with a queen kicker, and Phil's got only a pair of sixes. But look at this. He's lining up the bet. Well, he raised before the flop. He's going to bet on the flop. He fires out 15,000. 15,000. I raise it. Oh, boy. Peter's Pete's raising. going up. Pete's raising over the top. I love this. He's got the aces with a queen raising kicker. He's got a real big hand. 000.